Hey folks, I'm out here today to shoot two rounds, well, two different types of ammunition from my HK VP9, and both of these are from Hornady. I've got the Hornady Critical Defense 115 grain bullet and the Hornady Critical Duty 135 grain bullet, doing one of our pack T tests. That is five rounds at those bullseye targets there. We'll be assessing precision, that's the extreme spread of that group. Accuracy, that's the bullseye score on that target. Consistency will come from our lab radar chronograph. And then the T component is one shot into this clear ballistic, ballistic gelatin. One shot each, Hornady critical defense, another shot, Hornady critical duty. Make sure to stick around because we're going to talk about an evaluation about how all this went. Plus, we'll talk about how the critical defense is different from critical duty and how that matters to you if you're carrying those in a self-defense, everyday carry, home defense scenario. Let's go ahead and get started. Hornady critical defense is up first, target on the left. Consistent so far. A little bit faster now. That's five rounds. We're clear. Let's see how she did. That's really nice. Standard deviation of 9.7 feet per second. Average muzzle velocity 1,163. It has a estimated or stated muzzle velocity of 1,135. We've exceeded that. But you know what? This um, HK VP9 frequently does give me higher muzzle velocities. It doesn't have a very long barrel. It's not like the barrel's longer, but rather uh, this is a polygonal barrel. The rifling is called a polygonal rifling, and uh, that uh, is, in theory and in practice, oftentimes giving us uh, faster, higher muzzle velocities. Let's go ahead and fire the five rounds from this critical duty, see how they do on paper. We'll be shooting at the bullseye on the right. That's five and we're clear. There's our bullet. You may have noticed I have two others coming in from this direction. We're focusing on the Hornady Critical Defense. We'll follow that up in just a little bit with the Hornady Critical Duty. This is, remember, the 115 grain bullet passed through the Carhartt jacket, blanketed Carhartt jacket, passed through the leather, and then into this 20% clear ballistic ballistic gelatin block. This is the Hornady Critical Duty 135 grain bullet. Well, I'm so happy that I brought this backer block out, as I call it, my second gel block. That's an old one. 
that has been shot and remelted several times, hence it's darker. Still the same consistency, 20% NATO gel blocks. The bullet entered here, very straight path, and ended up there. At a distance, um, penetration looks like about 20 and a half inches. Again, we're going to cut this out of the gel block, make all of our measurements, including expansion, weight retention, and so on and so forth. Stick around for that. That's an important bit of information. Let's wrap up and review the results from the Hornady Critical Defense and the Hornady Critical Duty Ammo. You know, when I go out and I shoot these pack t tests, I gather a tremendous amount of data. It takes a while to go through that stuff to make sure that I'm analyzing and then obviously reporting the results accurately. Let's jump into the pack part of this test, precision, accuracy, and consistency. Well, let's start by looking at the critical defense ammo, 1.6 inch group. That one that I circled there, or on the top there, might be a flyer, not sure of it. Didn't shoot numerous groups to, uh, to determine that, but sometimes it is what it is, 1.6 inch group, not terrible. The um, accuracy score as it is was a score of 38.0 in the X-ring. However, once again, my um, VP9 is not zeroed for this round, and I can estimate that using the clear overlay, well, then we ended up scoring 50 points, perfect score, with three in the X. Comparing that to the critical duty ammo, the critical duty ammo, that gave us a larger group, 2.2 inches. Uh, again, looks like one flyer to the top. Very similar uh, result. And it scored a little bit better, 43 points, zero in the X, and once again, making that adjustment, if I had zeroed my Trijicon RMR for this particular ammo, would have scored quite a bit better, 49 points, almost perfect, with two in the X ring. Now we're also looking at recoil. On the right side, you're seeing the standard ammo. This is literally quite standard ammo, 115 grain CCI Blazer Brass. Notice that the 115 grain Hornady Defense was what you might call a more mild feeling round. 0.97 seconds, almost one second average recovery time with 16 degree muzzle rise. A little bit softer to shoot compared to the CCI Blazer Brass. The 135 grain bullet, the Hornady Critical Duty, went in the opposite direction. Quite a bit longer recovery time with this particular bullet, almost two seconds, 1.74 seconds, with a muzzle rise of 23.3 degrees. So that 135 grain bullet, those extra 20 grains, um, really did uh, show in these recoil results. Well, now let's jump into the terminal ballistic results. Hornady critical defense is in the left column, Hornady critical duty in the right column. Let's start by looking at the critical defense, 115 grain bullet. Penetration, about eight and a half inches. 100% weight retention and a retained length of 0.390. Our expansion was 152% with a score of 342.5 points. Now, my really good bullets will score well over 400 out of a possible 500 points. We've scored numerous uh, 9mm bullets well over 400 points. This one didn't quite make it but it did perform pretty well, especially relative to or in contrast to the critical duty ammo. The critical duty ammo zipped all the way through the first gel block and ended up settling in the second gel block. 
at a distance of 20.5 inches of penetration. 100% weight retention, didn't lose any weight whatsoever. Retained length was very long, 0.709 of an inch, and an expansion of only 100%, giving it a score of 162.5 points. Now, a couple of reasons why that score is quite low, actually very, very low. Um, number one, the bullet officially, based on the scoring that I use, over-penetrated. Now, I've heard a lot of you have made notes. I wouldn't worry so much about over-penetration. I don't think that's such a big thing. Um, and if we look at where the bullet expends its energy, it's in the early part as it's passing through that 16-inch gel block. The amount of energy that is available to that bullet after it exits 16-inch gel block is fairly low, but it's not zero. The, um, I've heard some people say that 20 inches is kind of the maximum that you would expect or should see in a defensive bullet. Anything more than 20 inches should be considered over-penetration. Well, I guess we officially over-penetrated, 20.5 inches. That's not the huge, gigantic worry that I have. I don't really like it to expand or penetrate that much, but it didn't expand. It didn't expand. That bullet is a pretty much reloadable bullet. It didn't expand. That's why we have just a 100% expansion. So the expansion score was poor also. Now let's look at the literature, uh, the information that Hornady tells us about the differences between critical defense and critical duty ammo. Critical defense reduces the potential of over-penetration, and it did very, very well. Only had eight inches of penetration. Person could argue that may not even be enough penetration, but probably so, probably sufficient amount of penetration, though we do like to see uh, penetration close to about 12 inches in this 20% NATO-style uh, gel block. Says also, a critical defense is unaffected by thick, heavy clothing, including denim and leather. Controlled expansion with deep wound cavities. I don't know that I'd call an 8-inch penetration a deep wound cavity, but it certainly did uh, expand. It did expand pretty nicely. Went through that barrier of the heavy clothing, essentially my old Carhartt jacket and the leather. So it did a nice job in that respect. The critical duty, on the other hand, it says superior barrier penetration, subsequent terminal performance, minimizing the liability of over-penetration. This is considered a barrier-blind bullet when shot through common barriers, bare gelatin, automobile glass, sheet metal, plywood, drywall, and heavy clothing. We really didn't see that. We really didn't see that. I mean, it, it went through the barrier, but what barrier blind means is that the bullet will be able to pass through barriers and still perform uh, correctly. In other words, it will still mushroom, it'll expand, and cause that very lethal um, wound channel inside its target. So as you can tell, I'm not impressed with the Hornady critical duty bullet. Um, there are numerous other bullets quite a bit better for the individual who's looking for an everyday carry bullet, a home defense bullet, personal defense bullet. And just, just like we saw today, one of those bullets that is better for those purposes is the Hornady critical defense. Now this one, again, still didn't score up there with our top-notch 9mm bullets, and kind of reigning at the top there is the Federal HST and the Corbon DPX. If you've got some 9mm bullets or 45 ACP bullets, etc., etc., rifle bullets, you'd like to see us test in the future, do a full pack t test on these things, just let me know. 
pop your ideas into the comment section below. And thank you all for watching.